Hey, thanks for tuning in to Going Live with FCTV, your only local variety show. Mario, did you know it was the only local variety show? I did, but I didn't want to upstage you. I thought I'd give you the honor of That's announcing true. that to the world. Now, you have the only radio cooking show on yes. WMBS. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, it's called just cook it with myself and Bill Alexander, who's now, your co-host. That's different because be a different. few months ago yes. you were, were, you're still until what Excuse date? Me. What's ahead? You still are. June the 1st, it June starts first. just cook it. So that's what, kind of what we're calling it now. We're easing into it. It's kind of, a, the show's not changing, okay? The show's the same, but it's just evolving. You're not changing. So. You're still bald. Yeah. Yeah, still you're still cooking. Yeah, I'm still nice. Yeah, and that's funny because we were talking about before the show started how much everyone liked each other. <laughs> so I mean, like us three or no, everyone, everyone in this room, and I really like you, Matt. That's I'm glad. Mm. So over on the banner is, <laughs> Dave, that? is Dave Sasarik. <laughs> Dave Sasarik, we haven't seen him in yeah. like. Can we show a picture of Dave? We like probably could. He's here. Can we get a picture of Dave Sasarik? He's got a banner over there, <laughs> someplace. Dave. Any but anyway, back to the show. Yeah. So Dave's um, been in Brazil for a long time. Yeah. And uh, you guys are filling in. I want to introduce yeah. Jen Frame. Please do. Because she's our well. co-host. <laughs> I want to still talk about. Yes. Cook back it. to the show. Um, <laughs> we decided. Bill and I did the uh, Mon Valley Home Show. Yes. And when we did it, we have these T-shirts that say "Just Cook It," and everyone. We got a lot of compliments on the T-shirts. People wanted to buy them. They loved it. And we did a lot of fun interviews there with people who weren't in the cooking field, like Jim O'Brien, the Pittsburgh sports author, like uh, Pepe Winery. You know, just and that's food thing, but not really. And we did a whole bunch of different B graphics, and we found out that people like that stuff. I mean, obviously they like the food because that's what we're known for. So we're still going to talk about that. But our new motto, instead of just cook it, which it was before, now the show's called Just Cook It, is food life and everything in between. So we're still going to focus on food, but we're just going to take that next step. And Bill's been on air for. 20 some years now. He has done a lot of really good interviews. He knows a lot of, you know, people in the industry. So I said it's a, it's silly to have you producing the show and co-hosting it with me and not utilizing what you bring to the table. So we're going to let open that up to let him get more involved, which I'm a little scared about to be honest, but we'll see what happens. You know, uh I think it's a great move because you're going to be able to talk about so much more than food which mm -hmm. you know about. You know, last segment you did a wine segment. Mm -hmm. Today, though, you're going to be doing something a little bit different. Do you know what segment you're photography? Doing today? Photography. Have you ever been a photographer? I have. I've done two cookbooks, and I did my own photography in both. I mean, I'm not a professional by any stretch of the imagination, but I know enough that if you give me a camera, I can make a pretty nice picture. Well, you make the food look so pretty to yes. begin with, so you well, have a good that's subject. Part of it, yes. So, it is. Nearing the end no. of, our, of our, we're not. No, I have more to talk about. No, 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 not <laughs> so, this segment. Uh, well, maybe it is. No, no, no. I have hang more on, to talk hang about. on, hang on. We'll come back to you. But do you see the one-minute sign halfway through the room? Yeah, I just choose to ignore okay. it. Okay, I know you do. She, the last segment I did on the last week's show or whatever, she was jumping up and down. Harry or chairs. someone, can we get a, so a picture no. of the one-minute sign? I have to do this for a reason because our interns, they come with us. You know, they're. Well, you They're know, that's Deborah, by the way. That's she has a Deborah. name. <laughs> Even though and she doesn't like me. That's what we we're talking about. Who likes each other? She doesn't like me no. at all. But. And you know what? They come and go. Deborah is at nearing the end of her internship. We have an internship program. If you visit going live with FCTV.com, you can find the internship tab. And people who are interested in broadcasting can intern with us. Can I and intern they can with you? Uh, no, no. Well, I would never accept your internship. You are in, you're generally interviewed by a team of people uh, that go ahead and, and look at your credentials. But Deborah is a uh, freshman at West Virginia University, and she's giving us the overtime wrap it up <laughs> signal. That means nothing to me, I'll be honest. It means nothing to me as well, but it's very important. Okay, so our interns do an important role. Did we get a shot of Deborah? Because her internship is almost up, as, as well Hi, as Deborah. Tilly Lee. Deborah, there we go. I Thank still like you for you, being Deborah. with us. Even though you don't like me, I still like you. It's okay. So she's given us the wrap it up sign. Maybe but we, we have a great show. <laughs> we have a Sorry. great show lined up today. But I'm not done yet, and I have more to talk about. Tell us more. Matt, what's your favorite color? My favorite color <laughs> is green. Green? Why? No, we're talking army green. We're talking lime green. You I'm talking like a Kelly green to me. Kelly green. That's Kelly green. green. That's yeah. a, out That's of control. Green. I like a hunter green. Hunter green. Yeah. You're manly, huh? What's your favorite number? Uh, 17. When's your birthday? The 18th. <laughs> okay, the 18th of what? November. Of what year? 
63. No, it isn't. No, that's a lie. <laughs> 83. Okay, that's all I wanted. That's okay. all I had. Thank you. So, no, hey, thank you. That was very last, interesting. I like to get to know you that Last way. show, Deborah is still holding the overtime wrap it up. She's kind of waving it around yeah, now. She's and jumping up angry. and down. Hi, Deborah. Um, <laughs> can we be aggressive? Yeah, <laughs> be aggressive. That's what I told <laughs> she's her. She's like a little bulldog, huh? She is. <laughs> yeah. Out of control. Uh, so, I'm going to ask you one question. Remember the game we played two weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah. It was degrees, about education, degrees. degrees. That was a fun game. Okay. Hey, here's a degree from Emerson College. Ugh, okay. Emerson. A degree in speech therapy. They now call it speech pathology. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who would have this degree? Robert De Niro, mm. Mm -hmm. Matthew Broderick, mm. <laughs> or, you like how I said that? Broderick? <laughs> I had a big challenge saying his name. Or that we know comedian you. and TV host Jay Leno. Ooh. Ooh, can I say that all of them have varying extreme accents to yeah. be speech See, pathologists? <laughs> what I said when we were picking the people who weren't that person, I said, who has good diction? Hey, keep it G. Keep it G. <laughs> Mario, you have good diction. <laughs> I'm just going to move on from that. Jen Frame, what do you think? About Mario's diction. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting fun. Let's it keep is. going. I'm going to okay. vote for Jay Leno. The, Jay Leno. I'm going to vote for okay. Jay Leno. Mario. <laughs> Bobby De Niro, of course. Bobby. Yeah. And the correct answer would be Jay Leno. Leno. Okay. It's the chin. One more. The chin. Do I have the chin? No, you no. don't. I have the double chin, <laughs> which is completely different. That comes from eating too much of Pareka's food. Okay. Right. So, so now it's my last. Mr. Bean. Yeah, he's Mr. nice. Bean. Rowan Atkinson. Yeah, your That's microphone's falling off, by the way. Uh, what's that? Your microphone's dangling. Yeah, it is. Sandra Bullock or Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, I love Sammy. You didn't give us the question. Have a degree in electrical engineering from from Oxford University. Ooh, who are they again? Mr. Oh, it has to be Mr. Bean. He's English. <laughs> Mr. Bean, <laughs> who is Rowan Atkinson, Samuel L. Jackson, or Sandra Bullock. Can Electrical I use, can engineering. I use a lifeline? You could. Deborah, who is it? <laughs> I'm, no I'm doing a not shout out. Do we have a thing. shot of Deborah? Not Sandra Bullock. It's not Sandra, it's not Sandra Bullock, 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 is what she said. I'm going to go with Samuel Jackson. You're going with Sam. Is that because in, it, in, in, what was he in? Die Hard? With a vengeance. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. And Pulp Fiction, right? Yeah, Pulp he was fiction. Pulp Fiction. I'm okay. totally voting but for him on his Pulp Fiction. I wanted to be Mr. Bean. I wanted to be Mr. Bean. You so wanted I'm to be Mr. Mr. Yeah. Bean, and you would be correct if Thank you said you. Mr. Bean. He has a degree from Oxford University, 1975, in electrical engineering. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with more going live with FCTV in just a moment. Do you have a buy local card? Yes, I have one. I do. Yeah, I have one. I use mine every day. Where's your buy local card? Use your buy local card to save money at restaurants, grocery stores, retail shops, tourist attractions, and service providers. Cards can be purchased online at www.buylocalfayette.org or by calling 724-437-7913. Savor the flavor of Fayette. Buy local. Give them another round of applause, everyone. The VFW Post 
8543 band and I'm with Rich Miller the uh, bandmaster and arranger did you arrange that tune rich no that's a published thing that's a published thing yeah. that's okay now you're a returning guest to our show here today but it's the first time for the band performing tell us about the selection that you opened with it's one of your standard marches that, that we play with some of our performances we do a variety of songs marches patriotic rock pop a little bit of jazz a little bit of everything as band people, we play all those styles, and we, we, when we do entertain for concerts and whatnot, we play those styles also. And also, we have a vocalist who sings with us from time to time as well. Sure. Now, I got to catch you last year in Story Square, and it was probably one of the biggest turnouts. The only band, I think, that maybe rivaled you was the Polish Six Pack. Do you know about those yes. guys? Yeah, well, maybe this year you can be a little bigger than them with your crowd, but I, I don't know. You were head to head last year. Tell us about Story Square in 2013. You're going to be there? We'll be there July 8th. They've moved the concerts from Thursday nights to Monday nights this year. And we'll be there uh, Monday night, July 8th. We'll play 530 to 730. Now, what can we expect to hear if we come out to that concert on, uh, what did you say, July, July 8th? July 8th. You'll hear some stuff you heard from last year and some new stuff as well. Also, the, the size of the band has increased. We have about 45, 50 people playing now. This is about half the band here tonight because we couldn't bring everybody down. Everybody would fit down here. Yeah. Fit here. So. I don't want everyone down here. <laughs> no. No, well, but you, you, you brought some people down here. Uh, you played a, a great opening. You're going to be with us for the closing. Now, you guys love performing. This is, this is not a band where you, you get a paycheck and, you know, you, you do gigs on Friday nights at bars, but you just get together for the love of performing. What makes it worth the time and effort? You just heard it. Right there. Yeah. We, we rehearse at the post BFW 8543 in North Union. We rehearse the second, fourth, and fifth Mondays of the month. Our next rehearsal is coming Monday. And we work uh, we're doing from sectional work also from 6 to 7, and the full band rehearses from 7 to 9. Sure. So uh, if you want to join the band, are you still taking new applicants? Absolutely. What kind of skill level is required? Well, as a matter of fact, we've got from, we picked up two kids, junior high kids, okay. seventh grader and eighth grader this year, who are coming to learn to play, play our kind of music or band kind of music, and they're having a great time. And we recently arranged a nation of about 13 up through 78. Sure. So and people with all kind of talent, all kind of experience, all kind of skills, they're more than welcome to come join us. Sure. So, like, even someone like me could come, low skill level. I mean, Tom Kalinsic was my, <laughs> my instructor, so I, even I could join this band? That's, that's okay. That, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Rich, thanks for being with us okay. tonight. If someone's interested, how can they get a hold of you? And, uh, call me at home, I guess. 724-439-1923. And also, Mr. Chris Decker back here, who's the band manager. Chris, how are you this evening? Okay, how are you doing? And then also Bob Manier, who's the, the, one of the uh, committee men also. Okay. Our first tournament player. Well, thanks for being with okay. us. Stick around. Thanks You'll for be playing us. us out a little later in the evening. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the VFW band, and we'll be back after these messages. A few years ago, I was at a dead end, underemployed, with no idea of where my life was headed. Then I enrolled at the Pennsylvania Institute of Health and Technology School of Healthcare Careers and discovered a great career and great life was only months away. Now, I've started the career of my dreams, and the future couldn't be brighter. The School of Healthcare Careers at the Pennsylvania Institute of Health and Technology offers career-focused, hands-on training for these in-demand fields. Call 724-437-4600 or visit piht.edu for information. Thanks for sticking around with more Going Live with FCTV. I'm your host, Matthew Dowling, alongside Jen Frame, my co-host. Jen, welcome. Thank you. You're thank filling you. in for Dave Sasaric, who is someplace in Brazil. Big shoes to fill in, yeah. but I'm trying. We hope he makes it back. Uh, if I kind of don't. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, now, I'm just teasing, Dave. <laughs> yeah, there's probably a deeper theology on what you want and what you don't want, and <laughs> Pastor Moss would be able to share that with you. We can talk later. <laughs> but today we're going to be talking about uh, or talking with Pastor Roland Moss from Uniontown Grace Brethren Church, pastor and also radio broadcaster. Now you have a WMBS feature, uh, Fayette County and the Civil War. That's right. And also uh, Grace to you. Mm -hmm. Now. Fayette County in the Civil War has been recognized as an outstanding radio series. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us about that? Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasters is the uh, accredited um, radio presence for the state of Pennsylvania, and they have a competition every year. 
Uh, it is set up by three basic sizes of um, metropolitan areas. There is the largest, which of course is Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. Then there are the smaller areas like Erie, Harrisburg, Johnstown, Altoona area, and then there's all the rest. And there are over 500 uh, radio stations uh, in Pennsylvania, and they compete in the area of actually 11 different areas, such as um, uh, the radio website, the radio promotional broadcast, uh, newscasts, uh, commercials. Uh, what I actually won in is the area of um, uh, the um, radio feature story uh, and series for the uh, um, for the Fayette and the Civil War and this is the award that they awarded last year and uh, I am going there again in another a little over a week to get another award for that as well as for our Sunday morning broadcast called uh, Grace to You which airs on WMBS at uh, 8.06 Sunday morning. Okay now Grace to You was also recognized for mm -hmm. uh, being a Judge's Merit Award mm -hmm. is that correct? Yes, Judge's Merit is actually a special category. It can be up to 15 minutes long, and it can cover basically anything. And so this is really a very specialized award, and we're really excited about being able to uh, gather this, uh, this award with the station as well. Now, pastoring takes a lot of time, mm -hmm. a lot of effort. You're looking over your, your flock as mm -hmm. a shepherd. Uh, what made you decide to do radio along with being a pastor? Actually, I inherited it, believe it or not. Um, WMBS has been host to uh, our radio broadcast ever since the 40s when we went on the air here. We're actually the second oldest broadcast uh, on air here in uh, Uniontown. And when I came, they said, we have this radio broadcast. Can you uh, do this? And I said, well, the only thing I've ever done is 60-second uh, commercials, but let me give it a whirl. And uh, never looked back and have had a wonderful time. It's an opportunity for me to tell stories. Uh, to draw people into looking at God's Word in a completely different and unusual way. Well, you have a wonderful speaking voice. I can see why you well, won the you. award. <laughs> Jen, have you ever been on radio before? Um, yes, actually, I have. Um, I used to work at a car dealership and I did their commercials. <laughs> Not, so, nothing like this. <laughs> nothing like this. <laughs> no. So, Pastor Most, what initially sparked your interest for the Civil War? Well, I have a story like a bunch of you out there. My folks took me to uh, Gettysburg when I was about knee high to a grasshopper, and I got bit by the Civil War bug. And then, uh, just as it was starting to fade a little bit, I took my kids back to Gettysburg, and it bit me with a, an added passion. In fact, I ended up uh, being interested in Civil War medicine, wrote a book on Civil War medical care at Gettysburg called Grappling with Death, the Union Second Corps Hospital at Gettysburg. And uh, so this is just a natural uh, outgrowth of that. This is the 150th anniversary of the, the Civil War. And uh, I am presenting these basically in chronological order. So we're coming up on the 150th anniversary of Gettysburg. And so I'm going to be presenting those in the next couple of weeks here. So uh, tune in to WMBS 590 AM and uh, listen in. They are on at a variety of times. And uh, you can catch them on WMBS. Or you can tune into their website. Uh, 590, WMBS 590, uh, and uh, you can check out their, uh, them on the, the website as well. They, they stream the broadcasts on the website. So let's talk a little bit about Gettysburg, because sure. while my viewers probably don't know this, this is one of my favorite places to vacation. Now, I am admittedly probably a, a Disney fanatic, so okay. every couple of years my wife and I go to Disney, but Almost every year, either my wife or Dave and I, who's the co-host of the mm -hmm. show, do our little retreat that we do in Gettysburg. And uh, a few years ago, they built a, a new visitor center. Right. So I was very excited about that. They moved the panoramic, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Which the cyclorama, yes. The cyclorama, mm -hmm. which maybe you could tell the, the viewers a little bit about that. You, you've been to the visitor, new visitor center, oh, yeah. I take it? Oh, yeah. Uh, the cyclorama was actually, in the pre-movie days, uh, the way you could go and see a movie of uh, various battles. And they were quite, quite popular. You would build a large circular building, and this was a large circular painting that was hung uh, around. And then they would actually add uh, scenery in the foreground, and you would stand on a platform in the middle of the building and look around at what was happening, what was surrounding you. And basically, it was the original 3D experience before we had to put the glasses on. And um, 
Gettysburg is an exciting place to go, an exciting place to, uh, they're doing really some new things right now as far as making the, returning the Gettysburg battlefield to the way it looked in 1863. Uh, one of the great problems with uh, battlefields is that time passes. Trees grow, uh, buildings are built, and so they're making a really concerted effort to return the Gettysburg Battlefield to its original, uh, its original look, its original feel, so you can look out there and say, oh, I see why they did that. Yeah, when it's like when you take Pickett's Charge mm -hmm. and you're looking at some of the monuments there, you think, uh, why'd they go this direction? Mm -hmm. But that monument obviously wasn't there when Pickett led his men through the battle. <laughs> Although that's one of the great questions that the uh, guides uh, mention. They sometimes have these people who are a little confused about the battlefield and they'll say, now did the soldiers hide behind these monuments during the battle? <laughs> no. You know, uh, the last time I was out there, uh, well, maybe the past few times, I've been in the new visitor center. Mm -hmm. And the movie and the narration as you're going up the steps to the mm -hmm. cyclorama sure. is by... Uh, Oh my! Senior moment, I know. Yeah. I, I can't. I you've, can't you've tell you that. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. I was going to say Morgan Freeman. Yeah. He narrates yes. everything. Great narration <laughs> for the Civil War. I mean, is it is just fantastic. So if you've not been to Gettysburg, this summer would be the summer. But it's probably going to be very busy. It's going to be very crowded. Uh, there is a reenactment every uh, July for the Battle of Gettysburg. And uh, it is very, very crowded. People ask if I go, and I have been to them. I tell them after the first couple of shots, you can't see anything with all the smoke. So, you know, enjoy the movie. <laughs> so, what do you hope that your listeners gain from your Civil War series? I really hope that they get a new perspective of how rich an environment we live in here, especially in, in Pennsylvania. We're close enough to drive to a Civil War battlefield. Uh, we have a rich history here with the 85, 85th uh, Pennsylvania uh, Volunteer Infantry that was from uh, our area here. And if you'd like to tune in uh, and check out these for yourself, go to YouTube. You can uh, Google my name, Roland, R-O-L-A-N-D, Most, M-A-U-S-T, or type in WMBS, and you can find them all on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Roland Most, he has an excellence in broadcasting award for his uh, uh, broadcasting award for, <coughs> for his show, Fayette County and the Civil War. We'll be back with more Going Live with FCT in just a moment. Do you have a buy local card? Yes, I have one. I do. Yeah, I have one. I use mine every day. Where's your buy local card? Use your buy local card to save money at restaurants, grocery stores, retail shops, tourist attractions, and service providers. Cards can be purchased online at www.buylocalfayette.org or by calling 724-437-7913. Savor the flavor of Fayette. Buy local. Thanks for sticking around with Going Live with FCTV. Joining uh, me and Jen here on the couch is Brandon Rumbaugh, who is a local Marine, and uh, Rick Proctor, who is the founder of Veterans Vet Racing. Vigilant Vet Racing. Vigilant Vet Racing. Okay. And we'd like to welcome you here to Going Live with FCTV. Uh, Brandon, we're going to start with you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background, your local guy. Uh, what did you like to do growing up? Well, I grew up um, in the area in uh, Dunbar. I went to Uniontown High School. Um, mainly, you know, football, baseball, basketball growing up. It was more into, you know, the sports and stuff like that. Just tried to stay um, as busy as possible. So uh, when did you enlist in the Marines, correct, Branch? Correct. Um, after high school, uh, I did a semester at Seton Hill University. And, you know, kind of decided that that wasn't what I wanted, you know, at the time. And I kind of wanted to, you know, go off and, and see, you know, what I could get into with my life and, you know, see where I could get going. And I decided to join the Marines in um, November of 2007. Um, I shipped off to Paris Island, South Carolina, graduated from boot camp, then went to North Carolina where I did some, some training and then went to my unit at Camp Lejeune. So let's talk about November 29th, 2010. Your life was kind of changed forever when you were trying to help one of your comrades. 
you know, if it's if it's not too difficult for you, can you tell us a little bit about what happened that day? Sure. Um, we actually moved away from our base where we were at in Helmand Province, and uh, we were trying to, to push out of the area a little bit to get um, to let people know that you know we were there, we were working, and we were active. So uh, we ended up moving into one of the houses right in the middle of the city. We were kind of we turned it into our own little base and we were living out of it and you know running patrols out of there and uh... one of our teams went out to do a little security patrol right around the house and you know make sure everything was where it should be you know nothing out of the ordinary and uh... one of one of our marines ended up stepping on an IED we heard it go off and um, you know we reacted we went to the site and uh... i went in to put him on a stretcher so we could bring him away from where the blast was because that's where the majority of the secondary IEDs are at and um, on my way to him I ended up stepping on an IED also and um, basically after that happened um, they checked the area from where IEDs didn't find anything so they called a helicopter in they loaded us up and took us to a hospital there in Afghanistan so I, you know, I apologize. In, in the uh, little interview we did before the segment started, I didn't ask. But what is the adrenaline rush like? You were going to save your your comrade, someone you knew. Apparently? Yes, yes. We, I mean, we trained for 11 months together before deploying. But um, he was he was younger than me. I previously went to Iraq, and when we got back, he joined our platoon, and then we worked from there. So when you were going out, did you did you even think for a moment that there was danger that you were encountering, or was it just, you know, I got to help this guy, my my brethren within the service? Well, you know, you know, this wasn't the first time we ran into an IED or somebody getting hurt. So you know, there's there's going to be more there, but it's it's just like you know playing the lottery. Either you win or you don't win. So I went in there hoping that there wasn't going to be anything else and there was so just how it happened now since you've come back what has rehabilitation been like for you I spent a little over 15 months at uh, Walter Reed down in Washington DC um, did you know it was, it was basically my job Monday through Friday just like I was back in the Marines you know you get up you go to work you come home do the same thing every day except at the hospital, it was um, you know putting the weight back on. When I was first got hurt, I was like six down to 60 pounds when I was in ICU. So I was working on you know weightlifting, putting the weight back on, learning how to walk, stuff like that. So now that you've come back, racing has become a hobby for you. And uh, Rick, you're the founder of Vigilant Vet Racing. You guys are wearing some great T-shirts that sport that name. Uh, Tell me a little bit about Vigilant Vet Racing and, and why you got involved. Uh, and a, a friend of mine uh, actually invited me to a race last summer. Uh, his boy races in a, uh, a local uh, series in West Virginia. Um, I, uh, you know, I, when I got to the actual uh, racetrack, you know, the, the family environment, um, the nature of the sport just kind of drew me to it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an Iraq vet as well. Uh, I was over there in 2004. Um, you know, uh, came home was was a little different. Uh, you know, with some issues, uh, and I've had some some problems. Uh, you know, reengaging with uh, with the public, and that really you know got me out of the house per se. Um, and uh, you know, I I just had this idea. You know, if this works for me, it can work for other veterans as well. And um, Launched Vigilant Vet Racing and uh, met Brandon along the way. Um, it's, it's, it's weird how we uh, we met, actually. So, uh, you know, let's talk a little bit about PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder. Something you have? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Um, I I would venture to say that uh, you know most uh, veterans coming home from a, a a conflict or a combat area who've lived in there who've lived there uh, in that environment for any significant amount of time um, have some sort of post-traumatic stress disorder 
Um, certainly, uh, you know, like our Vietnam veterans, uh, which I like to say welcome home to our Vietnam vets. Um, you know, we, we did a, uh, we were movement to contact in that we, we went out on patrols um, and you kept going until uh, you ran into something. Uh, that's, you know, that's what we do. That's the nature of our business. Um, so, you know, somebody, everybody has, I, I, would, I would venture to say that everybody, you know, has some sort of symptom of it. Now, you were saying that you were hoping to get the word out about the current veterans because we were talking before this about how a lot of times people think that it's like World War II veterans or like you said, Vietnam veterans, but we don't always think about our veterans today coming home with post-traumatic stress disorder. And you were saying like with the racing, it helps get out and mingle and... It does. And, and uh, you had mentioned something about the adrenaline with, with Brandon. Um, that's one of the things that I think veterans, uh, and again, I'm not a, I'm not a, a mental health professional or anything. Um, I'm just talking from experience. But um, one of the things I think veterans mi not miss but get used to is when they're uh, deployed for you know a year plus um, is the adrenaline that they that they uh, you know they feel they get used to that being in their in, in their life every day. I mean, they have to be on guard every day. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of vets come home. They uh, they may turn to other reckless lifestyles such as drugs, alcohol, whatever it may be. Um, but you you know you you start doing this racing um, you know and you get that adrenaline rush and and you know I think that's therapeutic I mean it, it you know I didn't have any issues with with any drugs or alcohol or anything um, but you know I, I, you kind of miss that adrenaline rush and and uh, this seems to satisfy it and on top of that the family can get involved. Um, I would think the teamwork too because yes. you're used mm -hmm. to being on a team when you're in the service and then you come home and you're kind of by yourself so if you are involved in something like this, you have a team around you. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, Brandon and I have, have uh, I mean, it's, you know, being veterans, I mean, we, we hit it off immediately, and, and it's like we've known each other all of our lives. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's great. It's, it's, uh, we hope to get a lot more veterans involved, um, families as well. So, Brandon, you know, uh, what kind of feedback have you gotten from others when they see you in action? And, and I, don't, I don't mean to point out the elephant in the room, but... Mm -hmm. You know, you've had a tragedy where uh, where you you lost a limb. So, what kind of feedback have you gotten from other racers or people when they see you in action? Well, as soon as somebody hears about what we're doing, you know, their their first question is is how how, how are you making this happen? How are you doing this? And and automatically, you know, people think, well, you must be on a fully automatic quad, you know, something. And but you're shifting the whole way through. Yeah, I didn't want. I felt like that would be the, the easy way out, you know, jump, jump on something that is fully automatic, you know, everything's already done, and I, I didn't want to go that route. I wanted to, you know, jump on a regular quad that so everybody is So you have the clutch racing. and the full... Yes, um, you know, just a, a regular Yamaha YFZ 450, and uh, we actually teamed up with Waynesburg Yamaha, and um, Brian Vasco, he's actually, uh, he runs that shop, and... Um, He's actually put a lot of time and, and effort into adapting the quad so that it's safe and that I can ride. And um, as soon as somebody hears about what we're doing, you know, they automatically want to, they want to get involved somehow. If it's, you know, might not be a, a money donation versus time or parts or something like that. People generally just want to help out in any way possible. Yeah, and there's a, just to go down a little bit, there, there is, uh, you know, they're doing something, they're building special parts for this, for this uh, ATV, um, and it, it's, it's actually hit the industry um, where something's being done that's never been done before, and it's being done for one of our nation's heroes. Um, and it's awesome. I mean, people are, people are, uh, you know, more and more people uh, are, are getting involved and, and are interested in, in, in what Brandon's doing, what we're doing. Um, it's just great, and uh, it's really taken off. You know, Brandon, we have uh, just a moment left. In fact, I've been getting the wrap it up sign for like mm -hmm. a minute and a half. But <laughs> your story is so compelling, and and I'm so interested. I'm I'm sure the people at home are. What suggestion would you have in in just a moment or two? Would you give to someone who wants to help our troops but doesn't know how? How can we help? Um, it's simple as. Uh, looking up Vigilant Vet Racing online, checking out the website, the Facebook page, um, all the contact information is on there. Um, you know, if, if you just want to help out veterans in general, um, you know, there's dozens of nonprofits that I can't even 
think of off the top of my head because there's so many of them. You know, it, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, money. It could be time. Just as just writing a letter to somebody that's overseas, or or just showing somebody that you know you care about what they did or what they are doing, is is better than doing nothing at all. Well, gentlemen, I thank you for being with us. Thank you for sharing your stories and opening thank you up. Thank very much. Uh, we'll be back with more going live with FCTV in just a moment. A few years ago, I was at a dead end, underemployed, with no idea of where my life was headed. Then I enrolled at the Pennsylvania Institute of Health and Technology School of Healthcare Careers and discovered a great career and great life was only months away. Now, I've started the career of my dreams, and the future couldn't be brighter. The School of Healthcare Careers at the Pennsylvania Institute of Health and Technology offers career-focused, hands-on training for these in-demand fields. Call 724-437-4600 or visit piht.edu for information. Joining us on the Going Live couch is Millie's Altman. Millis. 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 Millis Altman. Everybody pronounces it wrong. <laughs> uh, that's a, that, I, I apologize. Now, Millis, we won't give away your age, but you were born before the stock market crash of 29. I don't mind telling you. You won't? Well, then, how old are you, Millis? I'm 92. 92. Uh -huh. Well, thanks for being with us. You've seen a lot over those years, I'd, I'd take it. Well, shall we say I have a long memory. <laughs> <laughs> now, life events are sometimes an inspiration for your writing. You're a writer. Yes. And uh, uh, is it that case with the novel Innocent Strangers, your most recent novel? Yes. Okay. So tell us a little bit about Innocent Strangers. Well, Innocent Strangers is an historical mystery set in the 1890s in western Pennsylvania. Uh, a lot of people think that it was Uniontown or this local area. Well, I, I actually had a fictional town in mind when I wrote the book. But I think the reason that people think it was in Uniontown is because it's so much about the area and because the picture on the cover. The picture on the cover. Now, this is an e-book. Correct? It's an e-book. It's okay. not a print book. It's an e-book. So you can get this book at Amazon.com or Apple or any it of those places you get books. Amazon. But, but the cover here is right here. And what's on the cover? J.B. Thompson's house, correct? J.B. Thompson's estate. I wanted a coal baron's mansion in the, on the cover because the story is about coal barons and the high life that they lived. So this has gotten fantastic reviews, uh, very nice reviews, from Kirkus Reviews. They called it a perfectly framed mystery. So from that, and I, I was sharing you before the show, I used to try to read every book that we, uh, we reviewed on the show. And uh, it, it got to be a little bit much, not to say that the books on the show don't hit my you know, top reading lists and I, I you know, take them on vacation. Jason Jack Miller, who's been an author on before, I just read his book that we've reviewed like six months ago. So your book's on my list, but what's the tie-in now of this mystery to the co coal and coke industry? Well, uh, the mystery is because the mystery is not tied into the coal and coke industry. It's set in a small town, coal mining town, in the coal and coke region. And the story is about coal barons and the high life that they lived. And that's the mystery of the story. The, the um, murder is the, m the murder that occurs in the mystery is to the heiress to a coal mining fortune. And the story is about two people who come to just an overnight visit, a daughter and her father. They come for an overnight visit in this town and they're suddenly accused of the murder of this wealthy heiress. And the story is about the father and the daughter, the father's a lawyer, the father and the daughter trying to find who murdered this wealthy heiress because they're going to hang for it if they don't. Now, um, you know, in addition to writing, you blog and you use social media. Do you enjoy with connecting people that way? No, I don't. Uh, I 
the way I connect with people is by writing. I, my blog is on my website. Sure. And uh, I just connect with people on Facebook and Goodreads, and uh, I do a lot of uh, connecting. Of course, it's all about my book, mostly. The blogs are not about the book. The blogs are about what I'm doing. And what is your website? Where's my website? My website is www.millisaltman.com. And Millis is M-I-L-L-Y-S. And Altman is A-L-T-M-A-N uh -huh. dot com. Dot com, uh-huh. And they can find your blogs. They can find connections to well, you. Well, yes, I talk about my background. My father uh, was a doctor, well-known doctor in uh, the area. He was an obstetrician, and he's well-known as the baby doctor in, in the town. I talk about that. What I, years did your dad practice? My father practiced. He, he uh, was an intern in the Uniontown Hospital in 1914. My mother was the superint night superintendent at the hospital in 1914. Now, you know, I, I know our intern, Deborah, she's waving that overtime sign <laughs> at me. But I have to ask, someone of your age, how do you embrace e-books e and the Internet? And, you know, what, what made you go that route rather than writing a traditional book that was printed and bound? Well, this book could be printed. I mean, I could have a print edition of this book. I just happened to go for an e-book. And, of course, I had to upgrade all my skills on the computer. I will say <laughs> I had to do a lot of learning on the computer. But um, I, the book could be, I could have it printed as a print book if I wanted to easily. It's just an e-book, that's all. And they can find it on Amazon.com, Apple, places like that yes. we mentioned? Yes, uh-huh. Amazon.com is the primary source for uh, e-books, and it's there. Just well, go online and you can find it. We thank you for sharing your story with us and be being with us here this evening. Uh, you know, if you decide to release another novel, please join us again and we'll talk about it. I'm thinking about it, so I certainly will. <laughs> there you go. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll be back in just a moment. Chef Mario Pareca will be with us with photographer Egg Cope after these messages. Do you have a buy local card? Yes, I have one. I do. Yeah, I have one. I use mine every day. Where's your buy local card? Use your Buy Local card to save money at restaurants, grocery stores, retail shops, tourist attractions, and service providers. Cards can be purchased online at www.buylocalfayette.org or by calling 724-437-7913. Savor the flavor of Fayette. Buy Local. Welcome back to Going Live with FCTV. They brought me back out, which is a good sign. I don't know if that was going to happen or not after that opening segment. But <laughs> Deborah, we're not done yet. We still have time. Put that red card away. Wait, I'm anyway. in this segment to make sure you wrap it up. Oh, is that why? Yeah. Is that why? <laughs> well, you, you don't like me anyway. Neither does she. <laughs> we're here with Mr. Ed Cope. Pleased to meet nice you. Nice to see you. Um, and we've got some fantastic photography here. So why don't you tell us about your photography career to begin okay. with? Because there's some really impressive pictures that I want to get to, and I want you to be able to tell okay. the stories behind them. Well, um... I started out in 1968 uh, at the Daily Courier in Connellsville, Pennsylvania. Um, I had no uh, formal training. I'd never pick it up, uh, never had a camera. Uh, they trained me there, and um, I worked there for 12 years in news photography. Did some writing also, uh, news writing, and then I went over to the uh, uh, Tribune Review, and I worked uh, in Monroeville for two and a half years. And um, my job was eliminated down there, so I came back and I started my own photography business. And uh, then there was an opening with the Fay West section of the Tribune Review. So I went back into the newspaper business as a writer and as a photographer. And I worked there uh, from 1983 to 2003. And then in 2003, I went to the Herald Standard in Uniontown. Yeah, here. that's right here in our backyard. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I came here as a part-time photographer, and then um, they made it a full-time photographer, and then finally um, I was uh, named chief photographer, and I retired uh, about two years ago. Oh, wow. But I still freelance for the Herald Standard. Okay. I do freelance work for that. Now, 
you said you had no formal training. No. How I, difficult was it for you to pick up? Was it like a talent that you just had that someone showed you something well, and yeah. you got it? Or uh, was it th there was a photographer at the Daily Courier at the time. His name was Ken Bolden. And uh, he took me under his wing and taught me darkroom procedures and uh, shooting procedures. And um, unfortunately, he passed away okay. uh, about a year after I was there. So then I ended up having to um, take classes and uh, learn, learn uh, go to seminars and learn all types of uh, things that I needed to pursue the craft. And then um, the Daily Courier then hired Mr. Rosendale, Charles Rosendale, who was also the chief photographer to Herald Standard. He's deceased now. Oh, okay. Well, um, here's my question to you. Now, when you, f you said you still freelance today. Yes. Do you, mm -hmm. have you completely embraced digital technology? I have, yes. I started out with a big 4 by 5 film camera. Was it like one of those ones in the movies where they take yes. the pictures and like smoke <laughs> comes out because there's a <laughs> No, there wasn't any okay. smoke. <laughs> too far back. He got the thing over I his head and he snapped. I, I don't go that far back. <laughs> But I did start out with a 4x5 camera, uh, twin lens reflex, then to 35 millimeters, and then to digital. And uh, I wasn't a real uh, big fan of digital at first, but I'm a firm believer in it now yeah. because uh, it's so much easier to shoot and uh, you can actually see what you shoot. What type of camera do you prefer? Uh, we use an Nikon. Nikon? Nikon. Canon, uh, they're, they're just as good. Any of them are good. Um, so do you, let's talk about some of your pictures okay. now. Now, were these? Th tell us what they were taken with as well, if you if you can, if you remember. This that. picture here was uh, a fire in Connellsville. They re I call it fire escape. Uh, a woman was rescued from a burning building, and um, I happened to be on my lunch break, and uh, I didn't have my regular camera with me, but I shot it on uh, color uh, film, and took it back to the darkroom, processed it, and I knew that I had a good shot whenever I looked at the film. But it was chosen as uh, uh, one of the top 600 photos of the century in 2000 uh, wow. by Associated Press. It won five first place spot <laughs> news awards, local, national, and uh, state. That's wow. impressive. So uh, that it's shot. probably the best shot that I've taken. The lady was an invalid, and uh, they rescued her uh, from the burning building. And uh, uh, they just happened to run right towards me, and I was in the right place at the right time. And I want to say, too, you were on your lunch break, so you know, you, there, there's no such thing as a lunch break <laughs> no, in that business, right? there isn't. Well, like Mario and I were saying before, <laughs> it was, um, we could be in the right place at the right time, and we still couldn't do that. Thank right. You. <laughs> well, it's talent. That's what you get. Yeah. Huh? Definitely. We're getting the I'm signs. very blessed yeah. to be able to yes. have that photo. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, is, this is great. Uh, the, the one at the top right is... Um, not a, it's an unpublished photo. I took it at the Fayette County Fair, and I called it uh, Cowboy's Prayer. Uh, this was a funeral uh, that I had to cover of a, a, a Rocky veteran that was uh, buried. It was a very sad situation, but it was a very powerful shot, and it was um, chosen as um, uh, for a Golden Quill Award in Pittsburgh. This right. is a, a Society of Pres Professional Journalists uh, uh, sports photo that I took and this was a, a photo that I took in the 1980s of a I did a series of photos on the um, uh, um, a preacher that was uh, set up in the middle of the highway down on 119 near Connellsville okay. and oh, it was a, a revival so so do you have your camera on you right now uh, I have my uh, cell phone with me. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a camera in the car. Okay, so yeah. let's wow. take a picture of that guy. Take a picture of the wrap. Yeah. 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 It was they great yeah. to they have you. They don't respect anyone. Here. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Thank, Thank you, very you for much. being here. I'm These very pictures are wonderful. Here. They're awesome. Yeah. And uh, we got the VFW is going to be playing us out right now. So we'll uh, take a look at some more photos. Maybe you could take some more and we'll check out the VFW. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. It was a pleasure meeting you. My pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure.